AmiKit is a modern system that is designed to turn your computer into a fully fledged Amiga environment that runs for Windows, Mac, Linux, PyStorm, Vampire and Raspberry Pi, of which now includes a new version for the latest Raspberry Pi 5 model. Now some purists could argue that this isn't Amiga, but the creator of AmiKit has put years into bringing us a premium, more equivalent, which is frankly visually stunning to look at, as well as retaining an Amiga aesthetic. To be precise, AmiKit is around 18 years old now. Some will argue that something like RetroArch gets straight to the point of gaming and something like AmiKit is long-winded and maybe even unnecessary. This, my friends, is a different kettle of fish. Gaming with AmiKit is just one single thing you can do, amongst much more. Currently, there are several options of AmiKit to choose from, which I'll briefly cover later in this video. Zhang, creator of AmiKit, kindly provided me with a free code to give my Amiga fanbase a look at what the premium and fairly new version 12 has to offer. And to be upfront, I was encouraged by him to give an honest and frank review. The version I am using is the latest and to be honest, my testing playing around with what it has to offer is very positive. Previous to this, I was using a free version which limited me to the very basics of AmiKit but also allowed me to update to a certain point. AmiKit 12 will give you every update that Jan creates. The latest AmiKit 12 is most definitely a reason for Amiga fans to really invest in this system. Now let's talk about the setup process. After downloading the AmiKit 12 executable file, the first step was to enter in a customer ID. Now to be honest, and as an honest review, I found this a little bit confusing. After investigating this, I actually found that after downloading AmiKit 12, the customer ID was actually at the bottom of the web page, so I had to go through my web page history and open up the page again. After that, this was then rectified. The process was very simple and straight to the point. Now for legal reasons, AmiKit doesn't come with the required ROM files in order for games as such to work. It also does not come with an operating system either which AmiKit utilizes. So it does require a separate purchase of something like Amiga Forever and it is highly recommended in order to legally get those files. If you have a physical copy of Amiga Forever, simply pop in your CD and AmiKit detects those files automatically. If like me you don't own an optical disk drive but have the ROM files in digital form only, no problem, AmiKit will also detect them and automatically install them for you. That being said, ROM files for playing many classic Amiga games do need to be copied into the T folder that AmiKit will create during the installation process. As many will be aware, Amiga emulation can be daunting, especially when setting up a system to this spec manually. So what emulates the games then? AmiKit uses WinUA emulator in the background, but for those fearful of WinUA and its complexities, AmiKit pretty much sets this all up for you automatically. However, just by pressing F12 on your keyboard, this will then open up WinUA whilst using AmiKit in order to configure settings should you need it. A controller for example, which is just as simple as using the input option and selecting your controller from there once inside of WinUAE. So let's talk about gaming itself. As I said just a minute ago, for games to work, or more specifically, WHD load games to work, which I highly recommend with AmiKit, ROM files do need to be placed into the T folder. Mounting a WHD load folder is simple enough to do just by opening up WinUA and selecting the directory from there. Then simply open up the latest version of iGame, which comes with AmiKit, then direct it to your WHD load games folder and then scan the repositories. It really is that simple. AmiKit then collects from Mouse 2 for your games. Games will then display in iGame and open up after a couple of clicks. Gameplay itself is of course controlled by WinUA, which is arguably the best and most advanced Amiga emulator out there. By pressing my Xbox controller's Y button, I can bring up a virtual keyboard whilst in game, if the game asks me for particular commands. 
AmiKit 12 comes with a ridiculous amount of applications that range from software to internet browsers. One of my particular favourite applications is Morphos. By opening this, we can edit settings such as customizable themes and colours of windows. The latest version has some very slick themes too. I personally spend around 30 minutes changing themes and adding window combinations. We can also use this to check for AmiKit updates too, so Morphos is a great place for new users to start in order to get AmiKit looking just how you want it to look. Now we have a program called Rabbit Hole. What the devil is Rabbit Hole? Basically, this allows you to run Windows, Linux in Mac applications via AmiKit. It's very impressive stuff. Within the AmiKit drive located on the desktop, we have a utilities drawer, which you can also access from the very stylish start button in the bottom left hand corner. Open this to be overwhelmed by a plethora of things to play with. Within utilities, we have got a Commodore 64 Vice emulator, a ZX Spectrum emulator, virtual CD software to mount CD images to use within AmiKit, Ami Translate, which can convert text into a foreign language and then save to PDF files. And by the way, PDF Reader is a recent new feature for the latest release of AmiKit. We have directory opus, should we need it. We also have several media players too, including Amiga Amp and Flash Player. Within the internet drawer, we also have an access to a vast array of internet applications from Aweb to even Dizzy Torrent. Yes, we can use AmiKit to download torrent files. We even have an email system in there known as Simple Mail. AmiKit 12 also comes bundled with some games including Turrican 2. To be honest with you, if I was going to go through every single application that comes with AmiKit 12, and as of version 12, that's 400 plus apps to be precise. This review would seriously take around 5-6 to six hours. Let's just say it is capable of many things that a standard modern day operating system is capable of doing and this is evident over the vast improvements that AmiKit receives on every update. Do I recommend AmiKit 12? Absolutely, considering AmiKit is a system largely with one person behind it, this is an absolutely phenomenal achievement. Everything which comes with AmiKit is of the highest standard such as WinUA emulation, and better still, everything is with the author's permission. To use their software which comes embedded when you download and install AmiKit. It's nice that some of the best software for beloved Amiga has unified to make a complete system which works so fluidly and easily. In terms of complexities, it really depends how you're planning to use AmiKit. As an everyday computer, this can be achieved, but realistically, I would stay with Windows as my main operating system. I am inspired enough to install AmiKit onto an old Dell office computer and use it as a dedicated Amiga machine, and then eventually update in the casing with a new Checkmate case, which also do some amazing work for Amiga systems here in 2024. In terms of price and structure, really, you get what you pay for. The copy that Jan provided me with was the AmiKit 12 Plus 29.95 Euro Digital Download Edition. This provided me with a single license in which I used it for my Windows computer. The next version is priced at 49.95 Euro, which provides a license for free platforms. This is known as the Combo. Super Combo includes free licenses and free copies of Flowerpot. For those of you not in the know, Flowerpot enables you to install Amiga OS 4.1. This is also digital and costs 59.95 euro. We also have a second option for Super Combo and finally an offer for 99.95 euro. AmiKit offers a physical USB and download option for this. I'll leave the link in my description so you can decide on the edition that you might want. For the average Amiga user such as myself, I would happily use the cheapest option here as I only plan to use AmiKit on one platform for now. I have purchased Flowerpot separately from AmiKit in the past which enabled me to easily install Amiga OS 4.1. So technically around £40. We then have to consider Amiga ROM files and OS files which Amiga Forever sells for £20. So altogether for one system setup this would cost you around £60 or €60. Euros. 
Consider how much this would cost if you were to purchase real Amiga hardware and set it up to this type of standard. Do I consider Amikit expensive? No, £30 is great value. I think the issue some might face is an extra fee to update after a year. However, users of Amikit do get a discount and the Discord is active which is signed to support users of Amikit. We live in a time where people believe everything should be free, including retro games. Let's remember though that this is Jan's time and effort going into Amikit and maintain it to a very high and undoubtedly polished standard. Support the Amiga scene and buy a copy of Amikit 12 today. You will seriously not regret and just remember that buying is encouraging future products for Amiga. I will be uploading a basics tutorial of Amikit and how to get started very soon. So thanks for watching and until next time, stay retro.